So, you may have gotten a new 3D printer for Christmas as a present, and or maybe you bought it for yourself, and now you've got a problem. The problem is, what are you going to print? What are you going to do with it? You can, of course, go to Thingiverse and download some models and print them out, but eventually you're going to get tired of just downloading from Thingiverse. You'll want to make your own models. So you might be thinking, yeah, I'd love to do that, but where do I start? I have no clue about computer-aided design. I've never done it before, and I don't even know where to begin. So this is what this video is about. I'm going to show you how to use FreeCAD to make some original vases or vases and containers. I will also show you how to configure Cura, which is a slicing application, and send the files off to the printer. So, if you're new to 3D printing and you want to know what to do with your printer, stay tuned and I will be right back. We're going to create uh, vases. And in order to do that, you're going to need to download uh, Cura and uh, FreeCAD. So I'm just going to get to the computer, and then uh, I can show you how to do that. Uh, Ultimaker Cura is something that you can get uh, off the web. Just go to their website. Now, uh, I recommend that you go to the actual uh, Ultimaker website. Don't download it from some third-party website. The same is true with FreeCAD. Anyway, go to their website and uh, download uh, Cura. It's totally free and also download uh, FreeCAD, which is also totally free. Install these two programs on your computer. I'm not going to show you how to install the programs because I'm sure you know how to do that. Uh, install the programs, and then I'll show you how to configure uh, both of the programs uh, as we go along in this tutorial. FreeCAD is the main design program that we're going to be using. And uh, there are a couple of things that you'll need to do uh, before we can start designing. So when uh, FreeCAD opens, this is what you'll see. Uh, this is the start window. Now, FreeCAD works on uh, modules. There are many different modules. Um, and um, the module that we are going to be using is the part design uh, module. Uh, these are also called workbenches. So the part design workbench is one that is used primarily by uh, 3D sort of uh, designers who uh, print stuff on 3D printers. So the best thing to do is to just get it to start on part design. You may use some of the other uh, modules, but uh, for the most part, uh, you'll probably end up going back to part design. So the way you do this is by going to uh, Edit, Preference, and here under Startup, instead of starting it up under Start, go to Part Design. So make Part Design the default. So apply that. The second thing you'll want to do is go to Sketcher, and you'll want to check the Show Grid option because uh, when we're designing a, a part, when we're uh, doing a sketch you want to have the grid the grid is helpful so apply that say okay now i'm going to shut uh, freecad and start it up again and it should start on part design so let's do that all right so now we have started in part design freecad basically works by way of creating sketches inside bodies so we're going to start uh, a new sketch and we're going to uh, then model that sketch into a vase. All right, so let's go to File, uh, New, and uh, every model starts with a body and inside the body there's a uh, sketch, so create sketch. 
Now we're going to do our sketch on the XY plane because we want to work on a horizontal uh, surface. The XY plane is the horizontal surface. So we'll click on that. We'll say OK. And what opens up is the sketch tool. This is where we're going to do our sketch. The program basically starts by giving you the option of creating a sketch and then you pad that sketch. So let me just give you a quick example. I'm going to create a circle and then I'm going to close the circle, sketch, and then I can go to pad and make it into a three-dimensional object. It's as simple as that. So uh, I'm going to uh, say OK to that and then we can go to model and we can see the two parts of this particular model. There's the sketch and there's the pad. So I'm going to delete both the sketch and the pad because we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to create it on the XY plane. I'm going to say OK. So in order to create a, a, a vase, we're going to create multiple sketches. And we're going to create them on the horizontal plane. And then we're going to basically raise each of the sketches that we made. And we're going to make those sketches a solid so that they become a vase. So let me show you how it's done. So I'm going to go to any one of these sketch tools. Now, you've got a lot to choose from here. So these are the sketch tools here. And these are the constraint tools. Typically, when you do 3D design, it's good form to constrain your sketches. In the case of creating vases, you don't have to constrain your sketches. Just leave the, the sketches as they are. Um, the issue of constraint, constraining and constraints is, is a whole different topic. You don't need to know that for, for this particular project. So I'm going to choose the pentagon or polygon option here uh, because you can create some great uh, uh, vase and uh, container designs with that. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to the origin which is at the center and I will just create a, um, a polygon like so. So this is our first sketch. I'm just going to close this. Now we're going to create another sketch. In fact we're going to create uh, I, I think about four sketches and we'll make a container or a vase using our four sketches. So once again, I'm going to go to create new sketch, click on that. I'm going to create the sketch on the XY plane, say OK. And I'll create another polygon. Like so. You don't have to worry about the size. Just make it a reasonable size. Say close. All right, create another sketch. Again, XY plane. And uh, say OK. I'm going to choose polygon again. And I will make another polygon. All right, OK, close that. Not new sketch, XY plane, say OK. And I'm going to create a polygon, but I'm going to create a, a different polygon. We can see what kind of a shape we get with that. So let's create a, um, uh, an octagon. OK. Maybe make it smaller, this. Great. OK, so now we have, um, we have four sketches. I think that's sufficient to create our first vase. So as you can see, they're all lying flat on the XY plane. But what we want to do is we want to raise each one of these sketches on the Z axis, because we don't want them to all be flat on the, um, on the floor. One of the sketches is going to be flat on the floor, and that's going to be 
the base of the vase. So let's make the first sketch that we made uh, the, the base. So I'm just going to rename that and call it base. And I'm going to rename the last sketch that we made and I'm going to call it the top. And the last two I'm just going to rename middle one and middle two. Great. Now, the base we're going to leave on on the floor on the floor at the bottom of the floor. Middle two we have to raise. So how do you raise it? You click on it, go to attachment, go to position, go to X, and raise it however many millimeters you want it to be off the floor. So let's say I'm going to raise it 25 millimeters. Say OK. And there it is. It's raised 25 millimeters. So middle two, I'm going to have it be 50 millimeters off the floor. 50 millimeters. The top, I'm going to have it be um, 100 millimeters off the floor. So we're going to have a vase that is 100 millimeters tall. That's great. So now, if we look at it, we can see that each of the parts is at a different level off the horizontal plane that we created. Now we're going to go to the magical part of actually creating a solid vase. The way we do this is by clicking the tasks tab, clicking on the first bottom sketch like so. This opens up a whole bunch of tools. The one that we are interested in is the additive loft tool. Click on that. It opens up another window and it says add section. So we're going to click on add section and we're going to go to the next sketch. Click on it. And then we're going to say add section again. Go to the next sketch. Click on it. And then we're going to say add section and click on the final section of the vase. And now we have something that looks a little bit like a vase. Now you can change the look of it. I'm not sure I like this particular design as it stands right now, but it's easy to do. What you need to do basically in order to change the look of it is go to the model, click on the part that you want to change, the sketch that you want to change. If you want to see the sketch in relation to the model, all you need to do is hit your space bar and you can see where the sketch is on the model. So I think I'm going to change this sketch here, which is middle one. Click on that and make it bigger. I think I'm going to make it bigger like so. And that should automatically update the vase. Now it's looking a lot more like a vase. I can also raise the top a little bit if I want or make the top smaller, let's say, and raise it by putting it, let's say, at 120 millimeters, like so. And now we have another vase similar to the first one but uh, slightly different. So this is how you make a vase. Easy. This is uh, the project that you can do very easily. You have to know almost nothing about computer-aided design in order to create all sorts of different vases. Now the next part is printing out the vase. So the, the, the one thing that you need to do is save the project. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to save this as a uh, FreeCAD project, first of all. So we're just going to call this Polygon Vase. Say OK. 
save. And then we're going to export the vase as an STL file because we're going to bring that STL file into Cura for slicing. And then the final part will be to send it to the printer. So in order to export it as an STL, click on the vase, go to File, Export, and save it as an STL file, a file with the STL extension. So I'm just going to call it Polygon Vase. And I'll save it. And we are now ready to slice this vase. All right, so in order to print the vase, we're going to have to slice it in Cura to convert the SDL file into a G code file, which the printer can understand. So let's open up Ultimaker Cura and quickly bring the vase in and then slice it and send the G code to the printer. One of the things that is really important about 3D printing is just understanding the workflow. You create the file in a 3D program like FreeCAD, and then you have to bring your 3D creation, which is typically saved as an STL file, a stereolithography file, and that file has to be converted to numbers which represent the coordinates which your 3D printer will understand. All right, so when you open up Cura, it'll look something like this, except that if you open it up for the first time, you'll be asked to add a printer. It'll open up with this window. And in order to add a printer, you need to click on Add a Non-Network Printer here and then choose whatever printer you have. There are lots of choices here, so chances are your printer will be there. If your printer is not there, it means that you'll have to configure a profile for your printer manually, but chances are you'll find your printer there. Now, typically you'll have this window open, and this window is just an automatic window. It's like a window that will kind of figure out for you the right settings. We don't want this window. We want the window with all the settings. So we want to click on custom. And um, then we want to make sure that we've got, we've got all the settings. So you click on this uh, icon here and you can see that it's set to basic, but we want to set it to all. And we, we want to see all the different options that are available for printing. Now, when you print a vase, typically what the printer does is it prints uh, one single uh, layer in a continuous kind of uh, circle, and it will just print up the Z axis. And the vase will basically be created in one con con continuous flow. The printer will not print any of the infill. It will only fill or print the outer walls uh, and the base. So the outer walls and the base are the only things that will be printed in vase mode. Vase mode is a special mode that you have to turn on in Cura. In Cura, it's called Spiralize. So if you put spiralize in the search field, you'll see it under special modes. Typically it's turned off, so you'll need to turn it on in order to print a vase. So click here to turn it on. The other thing that you'll need to do is change the thickness of the walls. If your nozzle is 0 0.4 millimeters, which it probably is because that's the typical size of nozzles on printers, you will want to change the size from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. So what you would do is 
change the line width from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. And the reason for that is because with 0 0.4, the walls of your vase will be very, very thin. You can increase the thickness of the walls a little bit, even with a very, very thin nozzle, just by extruding more. So increase the size from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 and um, it will automatically increase all the things that it needs increased. Uh, the other thing that you'll need to do is increase the default print temperature. Only because since you're extruding more plastic through the nozzle, you want to make sure that the temperature is high enough to prevent clogging. So you want to make sure that the plastic is very, very soft. So typically, I increase the temperature from 200 to 210. So if you're printing PLA, the usual temperatures to print PLA is between 190 and um, 230. So I typically raise it to uh, 210 degrees, which is what I'm going to do here. Now, those are the changes that you need to make. The last thing that you need to do is create a profile. So you can have a special vase profile in Cura that you can go to whenever you're printing vases. And the way you do that is by going to the whatever quality you've got here. So whatever profile you're using right now, you go to that and then click on the arrow. And then it says here, one of the options, create profile from current settings, um, and, and, and you can do that. Okay, so uh, let's just create a new profile using the settings that we just um, created here. So click on that, and then you can give the profile a name. I'm just going to call it uh, Vase Mode Profile, and I'll say OK. So now we've got another profile that we can choose that's called vase mode. So here it is, vase mode profile. And then that profile is just added to all the other profiles that we have in place. And at this point, you're pretty much ready to print your vase. So that's what I'm going to do next. So now that we have an STL file, and a cure file, we need to slice the STF, STL file and send it to the printer. So the way we are going to do that is by getting the STL file, which is a polygon vase STL, and bringing it to Cura. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing here is that the file is very big. And I don't want the vase to be that big. It's going to take a long time to print, and frankly, I just don't want it to be that big. So if I click on the vase and I go to the scale icon in Cura, I can reduce it to a more reasonable size. So what I'm going to do is reduce it to 70%. So you hit 70%, you hit enter, and the, saw, the vase automatically rescales to 70%. So that's perfect for me. I think that'll be just the right si uh, size. One thing I want you to be aware of is that the vase is a solid. It's um, not a hollow vase. And um, it's not going to um, be hollow until we slice the file because we brought in a solid vase. The spiralize option we enabled previously is what is going to make the file hollow. So um, what we're going to do now is um, hit the slice button. I'm just going to move over so you can see it better. So I'm going to hit the slice button here. And um, that will uh, slice the file and will show us how long it's going to take. So right now, this file is going to take 1 hour and 57 minutes 
to um, to print. Now it still looks like a solid, um, but if you go to the uh, preview option, you will see that it is actually hollow. There you go. And uh, it's more evident if we uh, uh, go layer by layer and uh, just uh, see how the layers will print. All right, so this, this file should work just fine. Now, um, the next thing that we need to do is send it to the printer. So it's all ready, and there are a couple of ways of sending it to the printer. You can either uh, just uh, go to the G code file, put it on an SD card, bring it to your printer's SD reader, and uh, print it. Another option is to send it to the printer remotely. If you've got your printer connected via Wi-Fi to your network, then that would be the better option. And since I have all of my printers connected to the network, uh, I'm going to send this file to the printer using my network. Now, the way I'm doing this is by using Octoprint. And um, Octoprint is a great piece of open so source software. If you don't have it installed, I recommend that you do so. You can find out about Octoprint on YouTube. Just Google it. You won't be sorry if you install it on your network. So let's do that. Uh, let's print this vase. So I'm going to click the print with Octoprint option here. And that should automatically send it to the printer. All right, so now the file is um, going to the printer. And if I open my Octoprint interface, uh, I can see that the file is uh, actually there. Here is a natural image of the, the vase. So I'm just going to move out of the way here so you can see it. And um, the file is being printed. And it should print within two hours. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The vase, in my opinion, turned out really well. And I hope that the technique that I used gave you some ideas for creating your own original vase designs. Now remember that the technique can also be used to make containers. It can be used for other purposes. There are really an infinite number of possibilities. So the creative potential is basically there. It's, it's pretty much infinite. All it takes is a bit of imagination. Now, before you go, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, because doing so motivates me to make more videos. And of course, you'll also be notified when I release something new. So until next time, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.